Hello everyone. Now I'll be discussing question on cardiology. So we have a 29 year old male and he come with a one day history of fever and severe central pain chest. Otherwise he is normally fit. No history of drug or alcohol abuse, no travel history. He had a similar episode of chest pain some about six months back also. And the general physician to whom he showed, he diagnosed this, that is the case of pericarditis. Now, fever temperature is normal, heart rate 100 per minute, BP is normal, chest x-ray is normal, and if you and when the ECE was done, there was sinus tachycardia and widespread ST elevation in the limb and the precordial leads. That means there was generalized elevation. Well, what is the most appropriate first line treatment in this case? The answer is aspirin and colchicine. Why this the answer? Why not others? First of all, as the question says, it's a case of acute pericarditis. And there was ST segment elevation also. So what type of elevation we see? You can look, look into this. This classical ECG finding, this ST elevation, but is concave up. Why it is so important to write concave up? Because this is a normal recording. Now, look into this. This is the ST segment elevation, but there's a convexity upward. This is a convexity upward. And this is a classical finding that you get in acute myocardial infarction. But now look into the finding that you get in case of, in case of acute pericarditis. There is ST elevation, but you can see ST elevation is there, but this concavity is upward, like here con convexity upward. Look into this. You can see this is the ST is elevated, but concavity upward. That's the point that you got to remember. In addition to that, there is some depression of the PR segment also. You can see PR segment depression. This is a classical finding that you get in acute pericarditis. This is a very, very important question that you should know. Well, now we come to the answer of this question. Answer of this question is we have to give aspirin and colchicine together. Aspirin is the drug of choice when it is the first attack of pericarditis. But as the question says, the patient had an attack six months back also. So now you can say is a type of recurrent attack. So, non steroidal anti inflammatory drug and colchicine are recommended as first line therapy for recurrent acute pericarditis. Colchicine reduces the risk of recurrent pericarditis from 37 to 16.7%. So, now you can say it is a really good drug for reduction of colchicine. Uh, when we use, going to reduce the recurrent attack by colchicine. So aspirin and colchicine are the first line treatment in this particular case. As now that I've got stop the video, I've got certain questions for you. The question are, write down the answer in your copy. What is the common side effect of colchicine? And colchicine is also used for which other conditions? Well, the one the common side effect of colchicine is diarrhea. And it's used for which other condition we also use for acute gout. Okay. Now, option A, aspirin is incorrect as I told you that we, we of course, NSAID is always used as a, as a treatment, but in recurrent attack, colchicine is added. And if head was the first attack only, then aspirin was the answer. Well, option C is incorrect, prednisolone. Steroids are never the first line therapy for acute pericarditis. We use in certain condition where patients are not able to tolerate colchicine. I told you colchicine, one of the basic drawback of colchicine, it leads to diarrhea and which is at time very uncomfortable for the patient or those who do not respond to the combination of aspirin and colchicine as I mentioned in the previous slide. 
and aspirin and prednisolone they are never the choices anywhere now you stop the video i have a question for you write down the answer in your copy the question is what is the difference between fibrous and serous pericardium well simple question pericardium is made of two layers one is the fibrous layer and other is the serous level fibrous pericardium it is the outer layer is made from thick connective tissue well if i have to give you example this is the fibrous pericardium thick made of thick connective tissue and is the outer layer well inside is we have a serous pericardium now the serous pericardium itself is made of two layers so this is the fibrous and these two together this is the serous pericardium as i mentioned this itself is made of two type this is the visceral and this black color this is the parietal okay so out of the scar out of two serous layer inner one is the visceral and other is the parietal layer right well one more question for you stop the video write down the answer all the following cause of cause of pericarditis can lead to constrictive pericarditis except out of this which does not lead to constrictive there is only one write down the answer in your copy the answer is in rheumatic pericarditis it is not it does not lead to constriction why let's look into this picture so as i mentioned to you the outer layer is fibrous pericardium thick one the inner layer is parietal and visceral layer this is the parietal and inner one is the visceral so now in rheumatic fever only this layer are involved that is only parietal and visceral are involved fibrous layer is not involved now to ha to happen the uh, constrictive pericarditis this layer involvement is mandatory and as it is not involved in case of rheumatic fever that's why cp does not happen so uh, pericardial constriction does not occur in isolated inflammation of epicardial so called serous layer of pericardium which like in acute rheumatic fever now fibrous layer involvement occurs like in tuberculosis and that's the why in tubercular pericarditis uh, there can be constriction and in fact fibrous layer is involved in all other condition the only notable exception is rheumatic pericarditis now again stop the video write down the answer i have got two more question which heart sound is very prominent in constrictive pericarditis and what is special about jvp in constrictive pericarditis well the answer of the first question is s3 s3 is very prominent in cp and that's why this is known as pericardial knock and what is special about jvp in constrictive pericarditis in this normally jvp falls on inspiration okay but there are few condition where jvp rises on inspiration and this is known as kusmol sign and this is seen in condition like constrictive pericarditis cp right ventricle infarction rv infarction and as well as restrictive cardiomyopathy okay so these are three condition where jvp rises on inspiration same thing because there's a special thing about cp also 
So golden line to remember in this question, in acute pericarditis, the drug of choice is aspirin and recurrent. Aspirin and colchicine are for recurrent attack of pericarditis. Thank you very much.